Well, the markets are on the rise despite a surge in COVID-19 cases. Perhaps the hope of a vaccine in the near future is offsetting any worry that would otherwise cause increased volatility in the market. Today, we're going to be looking at a variety of different factors and their effects on the market. Hi there, I'm Kent Kramer, Chief Investment Officer at Foster Group, and for the next few minutes, I'll be sharing some of our financial perspectives for the two weeks ended Friday, December 4th. You know, the daily news has been filled with a mix of increasing virus cases and hospitalizations, transition plans for the new Biden administration, and stock markets reaching record highs. November ended up being a record month for many segments of the U.S. and European stock markets. These records are being driven by some specific market factors. The degree to which investors held these factors has had a lot to do with understanding returns. If you're not familiar with factor investing, we're going to give you a short primer to some of these key factors for portfolios after we cover the news. I mentioned in the news the virus is making a comeback, putting stress on hospital systems in different parts of the country. Wyoming, with the least capacity use below 50%, Rhode Island closing in on 90% of their hospital capacity utilization. Now, the blue chart on the right shows the dramatic rise in the number of hospitalizations September, since September 19th. Just over 29,000 then to over 100,000 as of December 3rd. You can see why this has gotten people's attention and while it's worthy of concern. At the same time, this surge comes after the UK recently approved Pfizer's vaccine under an emergency use authorization with their first round to start later this week, actually. Now, Operation Warp Speed is looking more and more like a global success. Speeding vaccine develop and next distribution. Dr. Slowey has been questioned about being overly optimistic, maybe from the early days regarding his timeline and expectations, but he appears to be ready to deliver yet again. Matter of fact, last week on the news, he said that he anticipates over 100 million Americans receiving vaccines in the first 100 days of the vaccine's approval. It's truly amazing. I think a lot of gives people a lot of reason for hope. The employment recovery continues, though at a slightly slower rate. This is not unexpected given the resurgence of virus cases and the corresponding limitations placed on certain businesses. Jobs are being added back to the economy, but they dropped to 245,000 for November compared to 610,000 new jobs in October. Like everything associated with this pandemic and the economy, everything has happened faster into a greater extreme than in other recessions. The chart on the left shows the dramatic loss of jobs at the very front of this recession as compared to others. You can see that in the yellow line versus kind of those blue and gray lines. Compare the slower loss of jobs and the dramatically slower recovery of employment, starting with the 2007 GFC recession, which is that kind of dark blue line, compared to that yellow line, which shows just the immediate drop as the coronavirus just basically shut down the U.S. economy in a hurry, and then the rapid comeback of jobs since then. We still have a long way to go, but that initial recovery was very, very steep. The unemployment rate nationally ticked down to 6.7% from 6.9% the end of the month of November. November did turn out to be among the best single months in decades for most major stock market indices. The Dow had its best month since January of 1987, closing above 30,000 for the first time ever. U.S. small companies led the way, rising over 16%, with the Russell 2000 posting its best single month ever. Developed foreign stock markets rose almost 13%. The broader U.S. market was over 10%, depending on which index you were looking at. It was truly a November to remember. The last two weeks have been quite positive as well. Other than some weakness on that last day of November, you can see investors continue to see positive things in the future, and stock prices are reflecting that hopeful view. One of Foster Group's key investment principles is that we want to advance with science. In looking to understand markets, especially drivers of risk and return, academics and researchers have spent decades exploring the idea of factors. Now, this research has yielded some important insights that we think investors can apply. Two types of widely discussed factors include mac macroeconomic factors and style factors. There's four examples here of macroeconomic factors. The thing about macroeconomic factors is they're easier to see after the fact. Business cycles are observable, but it can be difficult to predict the transition from expansion to contraction to recovery. And it makes it hard to exploit these kind of macroeconomic factors in advance and to do so consistently. But style factors, those things associated with stock markets, they are a little more measurable kind of at all times. In researching factors, Professor Andrew Ang 
gives a definition used by academics to determine what is or is not a viable factor for investors. I had the opportunity to talk with Professor Ang earlier this year, and he talked about these four ideas when you're looking at what factors would an investor want to try to invest in or try to exploit. He said, you know, for sure you want something justified by academic research, and then you want it to exhibit significant premiums. Premiums are just performance greater than the market, and then those premiums are expected to persist in the future. You want to have plenty of historical data, and you want to make sure that data includes bad times. When has the factor not done well? When has it done well? And then you want it to be implementable. You'd like it to be in a relatively liquid, transparent, and hopefully low-cost way to participate. So what are some popular style factors? Well, there's five examples that we think warrant inclusion in a portfolio. These apply to specific stocks or groups of stocks, and they're based on some quantitative measures. Other factors identified by academics include liquidity, investment, and leverage. Just how useful or explanatory these factors are is often subject to how robust the data signals are, as well as how pervasive or persistent the information is. The original factor, academics isolated, was the market factor, the idea that stocks outperform bonds and that there was a risk and return relationship. Later research found more nuanced factors in the data, starting with the Fama French three-factor model, which has been expanded upon by other academics to include a variety of style factors. One academic recently quipped that academia seems to be developing a factor zoo. So many factors are being explored and offered. These factors, these five we're looking at right now, they can be targeted across broad stock markets in the U.S. and globally. Value, size, quality or profitability, and momentum, along with minimum volatility, are all factors that Foster Group is looking at and may include in portfolios with clients. So how are those style factors done? Well, one of the things that Professor Ang said is you want to have kind of some long history showing positive or rewarded premiums over time. In this chart, the bottom black line is the S&P 500. The idea of factor investing, again, is to target drivers of expected increased return over longer time frames. In this time period, these three style factors, value, quality, and minimum volatility, they all outperform the broader U.S. stock market as represented by the S&P 500. The other thing researchers have been able to do is they've been able to look at specific stocks or mutual funds and through regression analysis determine what style factors are evident in each one of those stock, the company of stock, or in a mutual fund or exchange traded fund. Here we're looking at the DFA US High Relative Profitability Portfolio, and you can see this is an evaluation done by BlackRock, and their tool identifies that fund as being exposed positively to value momentum, and quality. This fund has done relatively well over the last 12 to 18 months, and you'd expect that because those have been the factors that have been in favor. If we look at style factors over the last five years, let's say, here's a look at them compared to the S&P 500. So imagine that the S&P 500 is the zero line, and the colored style factor lines represent how much better or worse those factors have done in a shorter time horizon than the 20 years we just looked at relative to the S&P 500. Now you'll see that growth represented by the red line and momentum represented by the green line have done particularly well, particularly in 2020, while small companies and value companies have not done as well. One of the reasons some researchers use to explain factors having higher expected returns is the risk associated with periods of underperformance over certain time frames and in times of trouble. Well, we certainly had times of trouble and risk in 2020. For example, this year, we've had these unique risks of the COVID economic environment, which ended up favoring large growth tech companies because they were enabling people to work from home. And that red line, US large growth, is predominated by large tech growth companies in the United States. Over the last three months, factor leadership has started to reverse a bit with long-term expected positive factors associated with smaller companies or value companies doing relatively well compared to the S&P 500. There are always many ways to look at the returns of stock markets. The factor lens can be a helpful one in understanding long-term returns and structuring portfolios to try to take advantage of them. This is part of advancing with science when it comes to investing and Foster Group has long used this approach to factors. and We've used it actually over 20 years. However, factors do not make markets more predictable, especially over the course of just a few years or a few months. 
Investors looking for higher expected long-term returns still need to have a long-term perspective and the capacity to wait, sometimes through periods of disappointing lagging performance. A good description of the long-term diversified investor might be one who is a short-term agnostic, but a long-term optimist. You know, a diversified portfolio is made up of hundreds or even thousands of securities chosen and tilted toward historically rewarded factors. And that portfolio may provide a less volatile portfolio experience as compared to one that is highly concentrated or one-dimensional in terms of its factor exposure. But risk and return are still related and investors who are pursuing higher expected returns will need to accept, even embrace, this kind of uncertainty in their portfolio approach. Again, we had an opportunity to talk with Professor Ang, who wrote this book, Asset Management, A Systematic Approach to Factor Investing. In the very introduction of the book, he writes, the two most important words in investing are bad times. Factor investing is about comparing how an investor feels and acts during their bad times with how the average investor feels and acts. And what Professor Ang means is, for many investors, they're comfortable looking just like the stock market broadly. So if they can look just like the U.S. stock market, they're going to feel relatively comfortable because their return is explainable. It looks like what they see on the news. But for investors who are pursuing higher expected returns over long periods of time, they need to be able to look different than the market. Sometimes looking different from the market in bad times means you may look worse. And other times that looking different from the market means you're going to look better. It's always fun to look better than the market. It is hard to look worse. For someone pursuing longer term, higher expected returns though, they need to ask, how am I different than the average investor? In other words, am I able to withstand some bad times, look different negatively than the market, in order to try and look better long-term and gain the benefit of those long-term factor premiums? We're going to talk more about factor investing in uh, months to come, so we look forward to talking more about this with you. That's it for today, so thanks for joining us. Always, if you have any questions or want to meet with a Foster Group advisor, please contact us. Our team is fully engaged every day. Technology allows us to meet face-to-face, as well as accessing our complete set of investment financial tools. And if you're finding these videos helpful, we hope you'll share them with your friends. And I hope you have a great holiday season. We hope to see you again in two weeks. Until then, be well. Thanks.